So congratulations on the upcoming album. Thank you. Thank you. It's a really exciting time. Ah, uh, it must be. But it more or less started out with you meeting one of your uh, great inspirations a couple of years back, didn't it? Yes, it did. It started out when I met uh, Steve Vai, who was really the reason I started playing the guitar. Uh, I met him backstage at a Generation X concert. And it was then that he kind of gave me the push that I needed to write my first solo song, Pandemonium, which then turned into uh, my first solo record, Controlled Chaos. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so you didn't meet him until like a couple of years back? No, I didn't. And it's quite funny because, you know, I live right nearby Steve's house. I've actually been to his home before. You know, I've been to the mothership, his studio. And, uh, you know, it's just funny. You know, I grew up literally less than 30 minutes from his place. And, of course, we're both DiMarzio artists. We're both Ibanez artists. You know, we have so many common people that we know in common, but I never met him until that day in 2016. <laughs> that is cool. Most guitarists uh, who release own albums cooperate with with different singers. What made you decide to go for a full instrumental album? Well, you know, all my heroes really are instrumental guitar players. You know, Steve Vai and Cetriani and, you know, even the, the great you know, musicians that are in bands like Marty Friedman, you know, from May in Megadeth have incredible solo records. So I always wanted to make a record in that style that sort of showcased my voice as a guitar player. You started this album uh, project on, on Kickstarter, and uh, I think it's only fair to say that it really kicked off, didn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes, it definitely, you know... Uh, I've heard for many years that music fans uh, don't want to support new artists. They don't want to spend money. They don't want to buy records. And I, I just, I had a hard time believing it. And so when we did the Kickstarter, you know, we opened it up worldwide. We had people participating from countries around the world. And, you know, the overwhelming, you know, consensus was that, yes, if you give people a reason, a project to care about and something to get behind, Uh, music fans are extremely supportive, you know, more so than you can ever imagine. You seem to be um, very loyal to uh, your fans and everyone's following you on, on the social media. I'm I'm following you, of course, uh, and it's impossible yeah. not to see the joy and excitement you have uh, for your debut album. Uh, at, at, at the same time, I've seen you play the biggest stages and also smaller venues around the world for quite some time, and you always look like there's no other place in the world you'd rather be. And though you've done a lot, November 16th, will be a milestone. You're, you're definitely right. Yeah. yeah. It will definitely be a, a huge milestone because, yes, you know, I, I'm 31 years old now. I've been touring since age 15. You know, so 16 years of my life spent on tour. But this will be the first time that I uh, will go out under my own name. You know, I look at the ticket and the ticket says Nita Strauss. It doesn't <laughs> say any band. It doesn't say any other singer. It doesn't say any other artist. It's just my own music, my own creation. And, uh, you know, this music was made with no compromises and, you know, no no one else's opinion in mind. And it's just uh, truly special to get to go and share it with the world. What has been the greatest challenge of being, uh, like, in total control when, when doing this first album of yours? Well, I think, you know, with all the control also comes all the responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, if something goes wrong, there's no one to point the finger at, except yourself. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it was a, a huge learning experience. Uh, I had to learn how to uh, let go a little bit and allow people that know how to do their job to do their job without me telling them how to do it. <laughs> so that was probably the, you know, the, the biggest lesson that I learned in this process. You already had created a name for yourself with uh, the Iron Maidens, uh, but working with Alice Cooper and the rest of his band must have been some journey too, right? Incredible. Yeah, definitely. I think that all the experiences that you have in your life, are they're preparing you for something. So, you know, I could have played in, in any other tribute band in Los Angeles, you know, tribute to Kiss or ACDC or any other band, but... I chose the one that had monsters running around on stage. You know, the Iron Maidens have a big Eddie monster. 
So it's only fitting that I would move on to, you know, another stage with just slightly bigger monsters. <laughs> Oh, that's very good. I've seen a, I've seen a few clips uh, online with a bunch of different uh, lineups where you appear. Um, I'm sort of feeling that if you get the chance to uh, perform, to jump on stage, do you always do it? Um, just about when I can. It's it's like you said. You know, I, there's no place I would rather be than on stage. It's, I'm not a good enough actress to pretend that well. <laughs> Uh, I love what I do. I love playing guitar so much. And if there's an opportunity to play songs that I like with people that I like, I'll, I'll generally do it. You mentioned earlier that um, uh, Steve uh, Vai was a very big inspiration. Who other bands or artists inspired you to start playing guitar yourself? You know, uh, funny enough, uh, a lot of my greatest inspirations, especially as a young guitar player, were all Scandinavian bands. Uh, really? still to this day, you know, yeah, absolutely. I was listening to At The Gates this morning while I was working out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I was so into uh, In Flames and At The Gates and Children of Bodom and uh, Stradivarius. And, you know, a lot of a lot of bands from Scandinavian countries were like my, my songwriting influences. And if you listen to Control Chaos, you actually hear, I feel like you hear a lot of that in the record, you know, in the riffs and in the guitar playing and the drumming. Any tips to the young guitarists of the world who now look up to you and uh, your playing? I think my biggest advice would be go out and play in front of people. Because, of course, it's important to practice. Of course, it's important to study and, you know, do social media and put videos on YouTube. But there's no substitute for actually going out and playing a concert in front of people and learning how to you know, interact with the audience and react to things that happen on the stage, I think that's the most important thing a young musician can do. And anyone who has ever seen you on stage uh, would know that already, probably. <laughs> 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 well, you know, I, I think, you know, you if you saw us at the Hard Rock and then you saw him at, at probably Centrum Scene, must have been the next day. Yep. Is that right? And also, yep. you know, you see us at a tiny venue and you see us at a, you know, 3,000 person venue. We do the exact same show. You know, whether it's to 200 people or 100,000 people, we put on the same show. Yeah. You know, if you're, a true, if you're a true musician, you have a true passion for your instrument. There's no difference between 30 people and 300 people and 3,000 people. I know, I know, I know. I've seen that before. Uh, you know, uh, obviously, Steve Harris uh, from uh, Our Maiden. Uh, and we British uh, Lion. <laughs> yeah, I saw them on John D, which is a little club in in uh, Norway, uh, tinier than uh, the Hard Rock Cafe you were playing at. Uh, really? when, when When he's up there with British Lion, and he's... he's uh, Just like you, he's enjoying himself, and it yeah. looks like there's no other place he'd rather be. It's true, you know, and, and Steve Harris, who loves playing music more than Steve Harris? No one. <laughs> you. <laughs> Maybe me. Maybe you. <laughs> Equally. <laughs> um, we can understand why it uh, came up, uh, but who came up with the name uh, Hurricane Nita? Oh, so it was uh, a journalist just like you who was doing a review of one of my first bands. It was the first time any of my bands was in a, a paper, and it was a tiny independent rock paper in Los Angeles. And it said, get ready, Los Angeles. Hurricane Nita is in town and here to stay. And I read the review, and I thought, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and so I adopted the name, and it's been mine ever since. It suits you. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I um, see with joy, I might add, from your posting on social media that uh, in between tours uh, and uh, gigs and studio work and workouts, you also go to concerts <laughs> and see other artists perform. Uh, what is the one act you would have loved to see that is still around? Oh, gosh. Who have I not seen yet? You know, I've never seen the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Ooh. I would love to see Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, it's just, you know, especially being from California, like it's just that music was always around when I was growing up and there's such talented musicians. And the, the problem with, you know, being so busy as I am, it's a, it's a great blessing to tour as much as I do. But I miss all the concerts. 
I never get to see. I just saw Metallica for the first time a few, a few like, like last year or something. I just saw Metallica for the first time, and they're one of my favorite bands. So uh, uh, I'd love to see Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, that's might cool. Might not be the most metal answer, but that's my answer. <laughs> no, but it's fine. And I saw you. Uh, that was a uh, tons uh, of rock. Uh, in uh, in Norway when you were playing down at the uh, fortress down in oh, Holden because yeah. uh, you were out oh, there walking and uh, and soaking in some of the music before you guys were playing yourselves oh yes I walked around that whole fortress it was you know the the great thing about uh, about my stage look you know is my stage look is still recognizable but I can go to a festival and you know put my hair in a ponytail and walk around with no makeup and no one sees me So I can just go enjoy the festival as a fan and see, you know, there's so many bands I wanted to see and, you know, uh, T-shirt vendors and food and, you know, all the great stuff. I was in the, the tent, like the metal tent for like a couple hours just watching, you know, Norwegian black metal bands. And it was amazing. Uh, and that festival itself is such an experience, you know, with the ancient fortress and the stones and the views. It's just a uh, It's uh, amazing. I really hope to come back. <laughs> it's really nice. I have to disappoint you, though, that it's moved from the fortress. It's no longer there. No. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Boy, I'm very I'm sorry. Why? <laughs> <laughs> um, <Hey. laughs> uh, I think it's because of the number of people it can take. So I think they've been struggling sure. uh, economically in in some way. Because, But I agree with you because hey, you know it's what? It, metal festivals. Yeah. Um, uh, is there any one uh, particular special artist that you would very much like to work with more than anyone else? Um, I would love to collaborate with Jason Becker someday. Uh, that would be a dream come true. You know, Jason, even though he has been living with ALS for 20 years, uh, is still writing and composing music and having, you know, guest musicians and working with other musicians. So that would be a dream for me for someday. And congratulations also on your own signature line with uh, Ibanez. How did, you, how did you go about giving them input for, for what you wanted there? You know, I have been designing that guitar in my head since I started playing the guitar. <laughs> ah, really so you knew have, this was coming, uh, did you? <laughs> uh, I will, you know, every every guitar player, I think, in the back of their mind says they know what their perfect guitar would be, whether it's in existence or it's non existence, whatever it is. Any guitar in the world, there's always one thing that a guitar player would change. You know, it's, it's a perfect guitar, but if only it had a maple neck. It's a perfect guitar, but if only it had these pickups or whatever it is. So, <laughs> you know, I've been with Ibanez uh, 10 years this year, uh, since 2008. And when uh, when they approached me about doing a signature model, I I already knew exactly what I was going to have. And they said, okay, well, you know, take your time and just let us know the specs. I said, no, no, I tell you right now. I can tell you right now on the phone. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, I'm ready. You seem to be leading a, a healthy and good lifestyle. I am not. Uh, if uh, I was <laughs> to ask, what is your favorite dinner to make? And how is your version of that oh. different or better than others? Um, I love to cook uh, lemon chicken. I make lemon chicken that when my boyfriend eats it, uh, I think I'm just one step closer to getting a ring on my finger. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, but I prepare it. Uh, I prepare it really healthy. You know, I I, I don't use any butter. Uh, I'll use you know olive oil instead of butter. I'll use. Uh, chicken stock instead of cream and just try to make it, you know, really flavorful, but also, you know, really healthy. Good fuel for the body. So that's today's uh, dinner tip from, from Nita Strauss. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, can, I have the best recipe. <laughs> that's very good. Made with lots of love. 